Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. We are learning so much in these lessons on Ephesians. And we are just beginning. We're still in chapter 2, beginning in verse 11. And this is the mystery made known, the condition of the Gentiles. Wherefore, remember that ye, being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. It is the blood that makes an atonement for our souls. And then in verse 14, now this is Ephesians 2, 14. For he is our peace. You see, when you know about the Spirit of God, you know that we can sing this little song. We must learn some of these things by song because this is important. What you learn by song, you never forget it. So we have the Trinity. And this is, sing this song with me, all of you at home. God the Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, three in one one and three, but you do not have the Spirit of God until you are born again. And then your spirit and your soul go to be with the Lord because the soul never dies. When you're in hell in this terrible place where there's no light, darkness, you will never see light. It's the blackness of darkness forever. And you as a child today, without Christ, you have a body and a soul, but not a spirit. But not a spirit. He comes in when you re receive this gift of eternal life and never leaves you. So let's sing this again so you can learn it. God the Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, three and one, one and three. Now remember, there is not another God in the world where we have three in one. And he is eternal. And he is the creator of the world. The Holy Spirit, when he comes in, he gives me this fruit. Now you must know this. I have love. Now this is all divine. This is supernatural life. I have love, joy, and peace. That's my inward life regardless of how terrible the afflictions and trials and persecutions are. That's why you are to never worry. Worry causes 38 diseases. And if you're living in sin, that's the reason you have no joy, no, no peace, and no love because you can't serve the Lord and have unconfessed sin. That's one of the things that I've been pr we've been praying for with these thousand people that we have asked to pray. We pr are praying for all the people to be under deep, deep conviction, godly repentance, renouncing every sin, renouncing every sin. And then we will see victory in our nation, with our children, pray for our children. What about our little children out here in this world? What is happening to little children today is the saddest thing in the world. 
if you don't know anything else today, you need to be praying for these precious children that do not know Christ and Satan is destroying them today. You see why? They are under this awful, awful lie that Satan is deceiving them and we are telling you the truth. And he twists God's word into a lie. And this is what is needed today. This is the greatest need that we have as a child of God to pray for these precious children out here in this world. That's what happened with Prophet Jeremiah. He was a weeping prophet. He was weeping for those little children in the street. Have you ever wept over these children? These prayers will make a difference. These prayers for all of the true believers praying today. And we have long suffering, gentleness, and goodness toward those around us. Faith, meekness, and temperance toward God. This is how God commands us to live. And this is why we are praying for all these people that need Christ. And for Israel, the peace of Jerusalem, the outpouring of thy spirit on the nation of Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace shall be within thy walls and prosperity in thy palaces. And we are praying for our nation to have leaders that are godly because blessed is the nation whose God is their Lord. This can happen if we all pray and believe. So we see this, he is our peace. And who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain a new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereof. See, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. We are one in Christ. Now listen at this last verse, 18, verse 17 first and came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were not. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Of all the gods today in the world, this is the only true and living God. He is alive. This book is the living word, the only living book in the world. Get in it. Start reading the book of John through this week. As soon as you accept Christ, there's only 21 chapters in the book of John, and you need to read that over and over and over. And this is another thing that you need to know, that in John 5, 24, this is the most important thing. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come in condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, these words are so enlightening to those of us that know thee. We pray for 100 fold every time these words go out, and we are asking thy perfect will to be done in each of our lives, that we will be holy as thou art holy, and we will desire thy perfect will, not our will, O Lord, that we'll walk in the light, we'll walk in unity. The Spirit of God unites and never divides, and that we will walk by faith. We will walk in the light. We will walk in humility. Teach us thy way today, O Lord, and lead us in thy paths. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. In Christ's name I pray.
Amen. What a blessing it is to know these truths and to know they are eternal. Once again, remember, our theme now is to know Christ is life's greatest attainment and the only thing in life that is important is eternal. The only thing that we give out the Word of God, the only thing that is eternal is important. And we must know this. All of the work, all of the labors are in vain unless we are doing those things that are eternal. So this is the condition of the Gentiles. The new division, the great mystery of this master work, the church is next revealed by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, we saw that this wonderful epistle, how God had planned this before the foundation of the world. Ephesians through 1 through 10, we see how God deals with us individually. Every person must accept this gift individually and fashions lost sinners who trust in Christ and to this wonderful master work. Now we are led higher and higher and the fact is that is made known only through the Holy Spirit that all believers are united into one body. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. First, the condition of the Gentiles, the uncircumcised as called by the Jews. They were without Christ. Such was the condition of the great Gentile world. But now listen at this dreadful news. We know the dreadful days of apostasy are upon us, that Gentiles who have had the gospel like the Jews did, preached unto them, they are turning once more from this light, yea, from God's best. This is the world today in which we're living. And this, is, this will make a difference. God will send revival when we obey his word. He said to Daniel and Daniel, he said, we have sinned, we have committed iniquity, we have rebelled against thee by departing from this truth. And that's why this evil is come upon us because we have not prayed unto him that we would turn from our iniquity and understand his truth. Because if there's sin in our lives, we cannot understand these truths. So this is, this is what is happening today in people that profess to be Christians, but we don't know, only God knows. They are denying Christ. They are denying Christ and his shed blood and his divine Holy Spirit in the world today. And we are to be restraining the evil forces. So this is a greater darkness than the darkness of the Gentile world before the cross because they are denying Christ. Denying that he was a born a virgin, divine conception, that he went to the cross and died instead of me. He has taken all my punishment. So these fearful and solemn words, these are, when Christ is given up his deity and his blood rejected, when men deliberately turn away from him, and deny his person and his glory, they rush into the outer and eternal darkness without hope and without God. And this is the world that we're seeing today. But now Christ being preached and believed in today, the Gentiles and even the Jews, God blinded their eyes so that they, we Gentiles could receive Christ. He blinded the eyes of the Jews so that we could be saved. This present dispensation, the dispensation of grace, in which he makes known this mystery, which in other ages was not made known, that the Gentiles, 
once without Christ should be fellow heirs and the same body this is now that we're living in is in which the surpassing riches of God's grace are made known. Now, listen at this. Now, after Israel rejected the king and the savior, now when he is upon the father's throne, he is exalted above everything. God hath put him up into this wonderful place that he now is seated in Philippians 2, verse 9. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee is going to bow, that should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and the glory of God the Father. He is exalted on high today. Now, when the Holy Spirit is on the earth. You see, I'm going to sing another little song. I can't sing, but I can make a joyful noise. This is the Holy Spirit today, dwelling in believers. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You see, Satan is wanting to destroy you. He hates you with cruel hatred. This is the time of the Holy Spirit. This is the dispensation of grace. He's on this earth to do his appointed work. Now, during this present age, God makes fully known what he had planned before the foundation of the world. And if you miss these, you need to know this. He wrote our names in the Lamb's Book of Life. He chose us before the foundation of the world. What did he choose us for? This is amazing, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That's what God is doing today. He, he already knew who was going to be saved, but we do not. And he never willed anyone to be lost. He never willed anyone to be lost. And this is not in this book. He came to seek and to save those that are lost. And it teaches us this in 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 2. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He's our great high priest today. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Verse 3 of 1 Peter 2. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. This is what he teaches us and to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is God's will for every person to be saved. And he predestinated, that means he knew beforehand. He never predestinated anyone to be lost. This is the word of God. And he is producing his masterwork, taking the material from Israel and reaching out with his mighty power after the Gentiles to put them into one body. And we're going to find out next week with the Jew and the Gentile, we are one in Christ. Every person that's a child of God, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. The poor, miserable, naked beggar upon the dunghill, the Gentile is taken up to sit among princes and inherit the throne of glory. The throne of glory. And all who believe on Christ are made nigh by the blood of Christ. And then verses 14 and 15, he is our peace, making us both one, Jews and Gentile, broken down the middle wall and abolished the law and commandments. Between these two, there stood a middle wall of partition, which separated them. This was the law. God himself, 
has broken down this middle wall and made an end of the enmity which existed between Jew and Gentile. There is nothing in this world that should cause you to hate another person. Because he, we learned this when we were teaching on love, that if you hate another person, you are a murderer. And if you did not hear these, le these truths, I'm going to give them to you so you can hear this right now. We are never to hate another person. He says in 1 John 3, verse 15, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. You can't be a child of God and hate another person. That's God's word. So, and the law and the commandments and the ordinances finds its end in the cross, making in himself one new man, Jew and Gentile, believing all of us trusting in Christ, not religions, not organizations, not churches, because you, your name is written on a church roll, does not mean that you are born again and a child of God. Made nigh by his blood, the blood unites us into one body, are made both one and constitute one new man, the body of Christ, and he's the head, and he's to do our thinking. We are to follow this book and every decision that we make. He is our wisdom. This is what God has accomplished, taking believing Jews and believing Gentiles, making us one. This is the great masterwork of God. He does this during this age. Then when the kingdom age comes, the Jews will receive their place of blessing and glory in their land, but they're going to have to go through the tribulation period, seven year tribulation period, when Satan is going to be reigning. And people, if you don't believe in the death penalty, you are going to be martyred for your faith if you do not worship the Antichrist. And you are going to have this mark in your forehead, the number 666. And if you do not worship him, you are going to be martyred for your faith. You are going to be martyred for, if you, after, during the seven year tribulation period in the book of Revelation, you see, we have to be taken out before that time comes. All true believers are going to meet the Lord in the air. We're never going to go through that wrath that God has to pour out upon those that reject him. If you reject him today, you will, it could happen at any moment because the rapture is imminent. That means it can come at any time. We are to be looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, this is why I'm on this air for you so you can hear these truths. So both Jew and Gentile will be in the kingdom age but not as one body. We're going to have our glorified bodies. That never hurts. We are going to be raptured, and when we reach the speed of light, 186,241 miles per second, we go into eternity. That is the speed of light. This is what God has waiting for us as true believers. In this pr present age, a body is forming where there is neither Greek nor Jew bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. What glory this has for every true believer, what we have looking forward to, and those that are lost can never ever have peace. Even after death, the pain that they suffer in this life is nothing compared to what is going to happen to them when they reach the door of death and go to a place of torment. Nothing in this life can prepare the, the, these people for this awful time of punishment. And it's never ending. It's never going 
to end. So, Jew and Gentile, this is what God has given to us. This wonderful, wonderful, the Mosaic Covenant, the law. And the law, this is amazing because here's what the law does. The law cannot give life. The law cannot give life. We have seen that we're in the dispensation of grace. And if you don't know these wonderful truths about the dispensation of grace and the dispensation of the law, here's what happens. The law cannot give life and righteousness. But grace, the dispensation of grace that we are learning about with David, and this is the Davidic covenant, grace bestows both on the believer and makes him a son of God. To redeem them that were under the law, this is Galatians 4, 5, that we might receive the adoption of sons through redemption from the law. Galatians 4, 6, and 7, Christ kept the law that he might demonstrate his ability to do the will of God, that the will of God was, is, was, and is the supreme law. So we're going to find out the next few weeks about the Mosaic Covenant, what it gives to us, and what was fulfilled by Christ. The law was fulfilled by Christ. So in the Davidic Covenant, we see what God is doing today. The dispensation of grace from the cross to the crown. The test, will a man accept God's righteousness on the basis of pure grace? Pardon of sin become part of God's family, heirs of the riches of Christ, eternal life. Men fail to accept this grace, and the church becomes lukewarm. Bring your